Hello and welcome to Creating a Business Within a Business Model for the IT Organization. We are delighted to have you here today. My name is Sonika and I am your host. Your presenter is Saurabh Hajela, Founder and Executive Editor of CIO Index. Hello Saurabh. Good morning Sonika and good morning everybody. Before we start Saurabh, I just want to take a moment to address some housekeeping issues. For all of you attending, this webinar will last for about an hour. Saurabh will present for 45 minutes and the last 15 minutes will be spent answering any questions presented by you, the audience. Please note that the control panel is on the right side of your screen which comprises of three panes and a grab tab. The first pane gives you your details. The second pane is a quick reference guide about this webinar. The third pane allows you to submit any questions to me, your host. Questions will be answered in the order that they are received. If there is a need for a broadcast message during this webinar, you will also be able to view it here. The grab tab allows you to minimize the control panel to the side of your computer. You can also download an attendee quick reference guide from our events page on CIOindex.com. In the event that you drop your connection, please dial back in. In the unlikely event that our connection is dropped, please wait five minutes and then dial back in. Make sure your microphone is on mute at all other times. That's it for me. Over to you, Saurabh. Thank you so much, Sonica. And once again, good morning, everybody. And thank you for joining us uh, for this very interesting topic. And I hope to have a good discussion this morning on information technology organization as a business within a business. Before we begin, a little bit about myself. I have um, over 25 years of experience in IT, from strategy to implementation. I was a member of the team at Booz Allen that developed their IT strategy, IT value methodology, and I led the team at AT Kearney that developed the entire intellectual capital for AT Kearney. So I have seen this problem from multiple perspectives. I was a consultant, then I was uh, the head of e-business for Prudential, uh, acting more in the CIO role, just a digital information officer as most people are being called these days. And then I was the head of e-business for ING, where I was heading up a unit that had a very substantial IT capability and a pseudo CIO reporting into me. So I've seen this problem from multiple angles and I have a perspective that I wanted to share with you this morning. We've had two webcasts in the series, Seven Skills of the New CIO. The first webcast we spoke about, uh, you know, the big picture. Uh, where, where does IT create business value? So we laid the groundwork there. Then in the second one, we spoke about ROI and you know the, the pros and cons of using ROI, the limitations of using ROI, and the benefit of measurement, but not quite going crazy, trying to measure everything in dollars and cents. The topic of IT organization, how should IT be organized, has been discussed and is being discussed ad nauseum. And for good reason, because when you're talking about IT value, your IT structure, skills, capabilities. And we saw in, in, in the first webinar, IT capability, one of the key components of IT capability is your IT organization and the capabilities of the IT organization. How do you structure this organization? How do you align it with the business and the business's needs is going to determine whether you are going to be creating value or you're going to be spending a whole bunch of money without delivering the value that you promised to the business. Now, traditionally what has happened is that IT started as an internal function. You were given a budget and you were told to implement technology. I need an email system, I need a network, I need laptops, I need mainframe. So you, when I say you, I mean all of us because I'm as much an IT person as you are. So we, we were asked to deliver IT projects there was very little thought given to the value of IT other than we were 
creating reports or we were creating a network that people could uh, you know connect through or computers and such but what value that technology brought to the table came later on you know so the whole discussion of IT value started after the fact you know a few years a few decades into this whole discussion people started to say okay you've delivered this thing to me now what value is this thing delivering to my business and hence the whole you know the realm the discussion on IT value started. Now this discussion has gone on and now we are moving into the realm of how do you organize IT to deliver the maximum amount of value. In this webinar we are going to define the problem. What exactly is it that is wrong with the way IT is organized today and what can we fix? What are we planning on fixing by creating or by modeling IT as a business within a business? We're going to identify the issues related to organizational design, why uh, IT as a cost center really does not deliver uh, you know, on the promise that we're making to our, our businesses. We'll introduce the concept of IT as an internal services business. And all of this is done in the context of the framework that I laid out in my first presentation where we're going to talk about value, we're going to talk about individual components of value, we're going to talk about how is it that we make better decisions about IT and that framework helps us do that. And we're talking all of these things under the guise of that framework because at the end of the day we are after better IT decisions, which means in the end creating more shareholder value through the decisions that we're taking. Sonia, before we begin, would you do me a favor and push the first poll, please? So I request that you take a few minutes to, uh, actually a minute, to respond to this poll. And as soon as the, you know, you're done doing that, we're going to start the discussion. So please push the poll. Sure. Okay, I think this is it. All right, so I'm going to start with a case study that is slightly old, but it's actually on the money when it comes to this discussion of running IT like a business. It describes both the pain points uh, you know, what exactly was going on uh, that needed a solution that was different from your traditional IT as a cost center model. And it describes some very good results as a result of using IT like a business. So this case study uh, is from USAA, which is uh, an insurance and diversified financial services firm that provides, uh, you know, these services to our armed forces. A pretty old organization has been around since, since 1922 and a pretty big organization. It's about $9.2 billion uh, in revenue at that time. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure over the last few years that the revenues have gone up. Now, what was happening was that their spend on IT was going up while their revenues were not going uh, growing up commensurate to that spend on IT. So in 1998, for example, their IT spending grew by 10% over last year, 1997's numbers, while their revenues grew up 5%. In 1999, their IT spending jumped 19% while the revenues jumped only 9%. So you can understand that if you look at these figures, you're saying, okay, what is going on that's causing these IT expenses to go up 
while revenues are not going up commensurately. Now let me let me first and I'm digressing here a little bit just to make a point. IT spending, um, you know, being correlated to an organization's revenues is really not a good measure of performance because you can get a false positive. Just because revenues did not grow up at a certain percentage while, you spe while you're spending an IT increase does not mean that you're wasting. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. So just because you have you know, IT spending going up doesn't mean that you, know, you, you basically have a, a problem where IT is spending a lot of money uh, and revenues are not commensurate, but I'm going to go make this point, uh, you know, in, in this context that let's just assume in this case that IT spending was going up and revenues not going up commensurate was a problem. They hired a new CIO, which they say was a business-focused CIO, and uh, Steve Yates turned the organization into an internal business. Okay, so they basically said, okay, uh, we, are, we need to turn this organization into an internal business and the results are going to be good, so let's see what the results were. You know, Steve Yates ended up hiring a CFO. So, you know, now you're, you're looking at products and services, so he identified 200 products and services. He converted IT managers into brand managers. Now, for those of you who are not, uh, you know, well-versed in these, these marketing ways, Think of it this way, that instead of having project managers and managers who are delivering and employing and implementing technology, you now have a manager who is more interested in products, profitability, markets, and all of the things that your marketing department does, except that they are now talking about IT products and services. He went a step ahead and he said, okay, now the internal organization will have a balance sheet is a very, very interesting concept for me, given the fact that you don't have revenues per se, but since you're defining products and prices, you can define revenues based upon how much of each product you sold, and then he had an income statement. They started behaving like businessmen. So they said, we are going to be marketing the company internally, we're going to be making decisions driven by profit and loss, so it's beautiful if you, if you think about it, you're, you will not implement a project unless you made a profit on it great concept. And when IT started turning a profit, they insisted on keeping that profit versus providing rebates to their customers. I mean, this is, if you are a purist and if you really want to think and talk in terms of IT as a business, then this is the term sheet. This is the set of steps that you must take in order to create an internal IT department, which is a business. Now these are things that he did. Now let's see what, what were the results. Now that one line tells you that the results were spectacular. You basically have, uh, you know, the company, the internal IT organization, basically just just you know trending upwards. It was an exponential gain, and they are basically showing IT cost dropping and IT's returns revenues just going up exponentially. I mean, this is a wonderful case study if you are a big supporter of running IT like a business. I am a big supporter of running IT like a business, but not quite in agreement with the whole concept of valuations and terms and, and revenues, so I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But just for those of you who want to, who want to ask themselves, what does it do? What does, what does running IT like a business do? You can see the results, and these are actual results. This is a published case study. You can see that it really did produce all of the benefits that most CEOs would give an arm and a leg for, and most CIOs would want to deliver on. Now, as we look at this case study, we have a few questions we want to answer, but before that, Sonika, would you please do me a favor and push the results of the poll that we took? Sure. Okay, we had about 64% um, of the attendees who voted 
and 87% of those believe that IT should be run like a business. I think initially we had a little bit of technical difficulties with the sound because I had a few questions about people not being able to hear and I'm hopeful that they are able to hear uh, now and that's why we had only about 64% who voted. 11% um, said that IT maybe should be run like a business and 2% don't know whether it should or shouldn't be part of a business or just be a supporting role. So 84%, so again, I can't see this poll, uh, this thing, 84% <coughs> said yes, it should be run like a business? 87%. Phenomenal. I think, I think that's in line with my own thinking, so I like, like the results of this poll. But for those of you who disagree, let's talk a little bit more and see if we can convert you. But I think it's a, it's a really good idea, in my, in my opinion, uh, this is one of the most critical things that a CIO must do uh, as we move towards the future of internal or corporate IT. Uh, this is going to be one of those things that will define whether a CIO is going to be a player or a has-been or just take a seat and watch the game. Uh, all right, thank you so much, Sonic. I'm going to move on now and ask the critical question that this case presented. So we're, we're saying that the results were spectacular because A, it was IT was run like a business. B, is it that IT was able to clearly articulate its value? Or is it that it clearly communicate this value? So what is the reason for, for the success of uh, you know, this internal IT organization? Number two question that arises is, you know, should all companies emulate this model and should be yours? And then the third one is, can all companies really emulate this model? Can you really internally convert your organization into a business with products and services and CFOs and balance sheets and income statements? Can you really have a brand identity? And can uh, you, know, you talk in terms of profits? Now, the example I'm going to give you outside of IT is the example of the defense industry in the US. If you look at Lockheed Martin and if you look at Boeing and all of the defense departments, they have, really speaking, one customer, which is the U.S. government. So if you really, really look at an internal IT organization which has one customer, what market rules apply to a single internal organization that, that addresses only one customer? And if you're a purist, this model of IT as a business starts to fall. The second question I'm going to pose at this point, and I'm going to address it as we move on, is can you really... Can a CIO afford to say, I will not do this project because it's not creating value for my internal organization? You have to assume that that project may be critical to the entry of a business into a new market. That project may be a lost leader. Remember, we spoke about lost leaders last time and the whole issue with ITROI. So all of those questions really complicate this issue, and hence I'm asking these questions because I don't believe, let me let the cat out of the bag, I don't believe that you can ever have IT as a profit center within an organization. Now, let's just address the, the, the key thing which is driving us in this direction, which is CEOs and other leaders, CFOs, asking IT, are you producing the most amount of value for the investment that we're making in you? CIOs have traditionally not been able to articulate, calculate, all of the value that IT brings to the table, and hence they are, they are accepting this challenge. And quite frankly, the CIO organization is the only organization that's being asked to do this. We are not talking in terms of marketing as an internal business or HR as an internal business, but hey, this is where we are. We are going to find an answer to this problem. Now, this is the model of IT as any organization. I've just, just tried to frame it so that now we can look at this from the perspective of IT as an internal business. So if you look at, look at it on the right hand side, you have your organization. If you remember, we, we, we spoke about core competencies and we spoke about business models in previous presentations, but here is your organization with its core capabilities. You have processes, organization, infrastructure, which we defined as IT capability in the last, last presentation. You are delivering products and services to your internal and external customers should you decide to take this capability externally. This, in essence, is what you're trying to convert your organization into. You are somebody who is just like any other business, 
creating some products and services that have a certain value in the marketplace and that marketplace can be internal or external. Now the balance between internal or external, because I know organizations that have taken their capabilities externally, the balance between these two will determine how realistic, how, how a purist perspective of IT as a business will work or it won't work. The more external customers you have, now the real market is speaking to you, so now you can talk in terms of real pricing. Otherwise, internally, you can put whatever price you want, and quite frankly, there's no market mechanism that can come back and tell you whether that price is the accurate market price or some arbitrary number that you put on a piece of paper. In this model, I've also put uh, in a very simplistic IT suppliers, but if you look at all the software as a service, infrastructure as a service, all of this cloud computing hoopla, now you start to see the complexity of that little box that I've called IT suppliers. And one of the things that we read up uh, recently, not until 2010, was the future of corporate IT where uh, you know, a major uh, consulting advisory firm came out and said, look, cloud computing is changing everything. So by 2015, 75% of uh, the IT staff is going to disappear. The CIO will have to be a business services leader. A whole bunch of predictions that, quite frankly, were sitting in 2013, I don't believe are going to come true. But I'm just saying, putting it out there, that IT suppliers include everything that you can procure from outside your organization. So if you go back to the way we had described a business model, you can now see that there are things that you do internally, right? Then that's the first component. The second component we spoke about was things that you forge relationships with external providers to, to get that capability, and then you have what we call value and a mechanism of value exchange. Some organizations have mechanisms where they exchange that value in terms of green dollars, and some have it in blue dollars, which is basically internal currency. Now, I'm going to mix and merge two concepts. One is a concept that we spoke about last time, which is IT as an internal investment. You know, you basically, instead of talking and thinking in terms of projects, and quite frankly, thinking in terms of IT projects, which, which we should, you know, as, as a group, we ought to decide never to talk in terms of IT projects, because there are only one kind of project, and that is a business project. And then we think in terms of not just a business project, but an investment. You're putting money into the deal. What is it that you plan on making that's making you invest? These initiatives, these investments, deliver value what, by doing what the business does. So IT is just an enabler providing certain uh, you know, parts in this overall machinery, and the machinery goes out, and where it meets the market, the market determines the value it actually delivered. Not the cost-benefit analyses and the, and the rosy picture that we all tend to paint as to the amount of value we're going to generate or, or my, my absolute favorite cost avoidance, no, that's not the issue. The issue is what does the market say? And the market only talks to the organization. The market is not talking to IT. These initiatives typically don't have a price. The only thing they're talking are in terms of costs. And then the value is the amount of money or you made or saved for the business. Now, if you look in contrast to IT as a business, now you're talking of IT products and services. You're talking of an internal customer, which can be marketing, HR, whatever. And you're talking in terms of product pricing, you're talking in terms of revenues, you're talking in terms of profitability. Now you're no longer delivering initiatives, you're no longer delivering on investments, you are actually selling products and services in a marketplace and getting money in response in return for that value exchange. So you will think in terms of IT capability, you will think, think in terms of IT business model, you will think in terms of all of the four components of that IT capability aligned to that business model. One of these approaches, we spoke about IT capability and its two components, one is alignment, the other one is delivery, and we spoke about its, its elements, which were, you know, you had your vision slash strategy, you had organization, uh, infrastructure, and processes. If you look at IT as a business, now you're looking at that same capability producing products and services, and those products and services being sold to the business. This is, in essence, the connection that we need to establish between what we discussed last time 
what we discussed in terms of business capability and model and strategy and processes, and your customer. IT as an internal organization places value in the price of the product and servicing. And if you're a marketing purist, you think not in terms of just product, but you think in terms of product offering. Because there is bundling, unbundling, there's a whole bunch of things that go into a base product or the definition of the product that we all come to understand. So the price is determined by the marketplace, like I said. So you're now saying all of the value in the work that I do just like a business is going to be determined by the price that the market puts. Now, an internal marketing, how smart is it for you to say that whatever price I put, they will have to pay because they, this is a captive audience. Unless you say, Mr. Marketing, Mr. Chief Marketing Officer, you don't have to buy the service from me. You can actually buy the service from IBM or Cisco or whatever. That is where competition comes in. That is where this internal, dedicated, captive market can now speak, and this becomes a real market for you. But there's only one aspect to it, because you also ought to then be able to sell your products, not internally, but externally as well. Now, just like any, any business, your revenues are driven by price time the products sold, right? that will be to a captive market. Now, here's your other problem, economies of scale. Any business that produces one thing wants to be able to sell many copies of that thing because you know incrementally all the cost falls, right? And your profitability for every incremental, every incremental widget sold increases. Can we really talk, can we really think in terms of real revenues and profitability when we cannot think in terms of economies of scale because a whole bunch of projects, I mean, how many SAP systems are you going to implement in the same company? Let's just say you have multiple divisions. Yes, so you have now delivered five, ten, seven copies of it, but not like SAP that has delivered thousands. So your real economies of scale are now going to be shrinking because you couldn't sell those many copies of that same service. Marketing. Uh, quite frankly, if you're the only provider, what are we talking in terms of marketing and branding? How do you brand yourself? How do you create a business model in a captive audience that really doesn't have the option of going outside and buying it from anywhere else? Your cost is your IT budget. You can create a profit. Well, you know, you've, you've got this audience that has to buy things from you. Like I said, you know, Boeing will make a plane. First of all, the government will invest in that. Then they'll make a plane and they'll sell it to you for any price that they deem appropriate. As you can see with the F-35 and the F-22 Raptor, they're charging whatever they want. The costs have gone up. Yet, at three, four hundred million dollars, we, we, we have to buy that plane because, you know, we've invested in it and they have this market. Where else are we going to go for planes? Benchmarking, and like I said, the market determines prices. There is absolutely no uh, you know, opportunity for us to benchmark prices to a real market. Uh, at this point, I think I've, I've laid down, uh, you know, my vision of an internal organization and the issues with it. But I want to ask you a question. So we're going to push poll number two. Sonika, if you don't mind, would you please push poll number two? Sure. There it is. So let's take about a minute to respond to this, please. And I'd really appreciate if all of you responded so we have a clear idea of what you're thinking.
I think that's about a minute. So Sonica, if you don't mind, please uh, push that poll out. I did. Great. Thank you so much. Now, getting back to our whole discussion on, on IT uh, as an internal business, we spoke about IT capability and IT initiatives and business capability. Now, this whole issue of value, we discussed last time how value is determined by alignment, but it's not, that's, that's a necessary but not a sufficient condition. If you look at IT initiatives and you look at IT investments, then you're basically looking at this whole issue of alignment, the left blue box being exactly aligned to the right blue box. IT capability, creating initiatives, those initiatives then being aligned with business capability. We saw last time how business capability has a commensurate IT capability. We saw how business capability is driven by business models. So I'm not going to go through this one more time, but I'm just trying to lay this picture one more time for you to see and connect the whole issue of IT initiatives, IT alignment, business capability, and IT capability. Now, under this model, we've said that our entire question of value, remember, we're trying to make better decisions about IT, we're trying to create more value using IT, so this whole discussion is about IT value, and that's, that's why we're talking about IT organization design or IT organization's operating model. The value is placed in that initiative. We're, we're, we're talking about, well, you know, some people talk in terms of alignment, some people talk in terms of net present value, whatever it is that floats your boat. The, 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 the net of it is that you are going to have to come back to value and you're going to have to come to cost. So if you're thinking in cost terms for that particular project or initiative or investment, you're now going to have to see the budget, the dollars, the assets, the organizational costs that are involved. Now, value is in the initiative. These initiatives are consuming dollars and you know they're, they're taking up uh, assets and they're taking up organizational capability. They generate explicit value. We saw this the last time, the basically business value in terms of whether you know, you're saying, okay, I, I'm creating a new product, I'm entering a new market, I'm undertaking something that is going to bring in revenues to the organization and IT is helping me do that. Right? So, so explicit business value can be defined in those terms. Then there is implicit value that is defined. You know, you have now enhanced technology capability. We spoke about residual value. All of these things are now within the organization that are created as a result of you undertaking any activity that is productive. So now you're saying all of the value is resident in the organization and it's like money in the bank, you're cashing when the next project comes in. Alignment as we saw, is necessary because that, that initiative that you undertook must do something for the business. But we also saw that just because you're aligned does not mean that you're delivering value. I'm not going to go through that again, but this is the model for value creation, cost, and the whole idea of IT value is interwoven in this form. Now, You've seen the two models. You've seen the IT initiative model. You've seen IT as an internal business model. If you want to think in terms of IT as a business, these are the changes you're going to have to make. So let's talk about these changes. You will have to think of the CIO as not the head of IT, as not an order taker. You know, I'm using a very pejorative term, but you know, most people think of CIOs as going and saying, what should I do next, right? Whether it's explicitly in that manner or it's implicitly in that manner by saying, okay, I'm aligning my capabilities to the business. Well, that's order taking. It's just a nice, fancy way of saying it, and now because you've got strategy involved, a nice, you know, fancy words, doesn't mean anything other than you're an enabler of business capability. If you move to IT as a business, you're no longer in that business, you're now in the business of driving value. You're driving value for your organization, Yes, you're aligning yourself with the business, but you are doing that in a manner that is first keeping in mind your profitability, not the profitability of the business as a whole. We, when, when we are selling consulting services, yes, of course we want our clients to be successful, but quite frankly, the last time I thought about the profitability of a client was a long time ago. I'm primarily thinking about the profitability of my consulting firm. 
And that is a fact. I mean, you, you, you talk to any business, the person who sells you bread understands that if you lose your job, you won't be able to buy bread for, from them. But quite frankly, they are focused on how much money they're going to make on each loaf of bread they sell to you. The second thing is people have uh, instituted relationship managers, you know, those, those uh, connection points, linkage points with the business or business divisions. Those people are now going to be thinking in terms of product management. They're going to have to be product managers. And here's a key distinction between a relationship manager and a product manager. A product manager is focused on profitability. They are only going to be asking their teams to deliver on products and services that have the maximum amount of profit. So if a product, I'm just making this up, if a product has little profitability or negative profitability, the product manage, manager will not sell that product. It's a huge difference, it's a huge change in mindset, which a lot of people who, uh, you know, who, who, who promote this business, uh, you know, internal uh, IT as a business, forget. The third thing is you now have to have your own back office. You have to have billing, accounting, a whole finance organization, a whole H HR organization. So in other words, if you're going to be using your internal HR organization, you now have to start thinking in terms of buying that product or service. If you're going to be using your internal finance, it's your CFO's organization, you're thinking of buying that service. You, you get my point. You're now thinking profitability, you're thinking if my CFO's organization is not able to give me these services at the best possible cost, I will go externally and hire my own accounting firm. You get the picture? This is how complicated it gets if you really become purist, as a lot of people have become recently. The second point I want to make is that you can no longer think in terms of vendors. Uh, one, of the, one of the worst practices in IT organizations that I've seen is, we treat people who supply things to us as vendors. Well, they are partners because, quite frankly, if you think of General Motors, if you think of a car company, can they deliver a car profitably? A profitability? Okay, I can't say the word, but for profitability, General Motors has to go out and partner with their suppliers. And there's a whole, the whole realm of vendor relationship management was created by companies that realized that I now need to extend my organization's boundaries. And we're going to talk about this in vendor relationship management webinar that's coming up in a few, few weeks. But you now have to change your entire mindset. This person is now going to be inside your organization as a strategic partner, not a vendor who stays at the door, delivers the goods, and then turns around and goes away. There are different models. You can have a cooperation model because the same partner can go directly to your marketing chief, chief marketing officer and provide the same services. You're going to have to figure out how is it that you're going to keep them at bay because now you've opened the door so they can and will come in. The second thing is, do you treat them as competitors? Then how do you deal with them? What kind of a business model are you going to create in order to compete with this person? Third element. You've got to think in terms of product catalog. You're no longer in the initial business. A product catalog has got very clearly defined profitability, profitability-driven products. You have to think in terms of pricing it. You have to think in terms of the whole realm of external factors that you've never factored in when you ran your organization. That is now going to be your business. You're going to have to think in terms of all of these things. And like I said, if something is not profitable, you're going to have to get rid of it. And imagine how your business responds to that particular decision that a CIO makes. The fourth thing is pricing or a rate sheet. Now you are in the business of providing, well, you say, well, I can, I can do custom jobs, I can do you know, price plus, I can do different kinds of things for you, Mr. CMO. This is my price sheet. How interesting would that discussion get uh, you know, obviously there is moderation involved, and this model does work if moderation is the key word. All right, uh, did we, Sonia, I don't believe we, we did the poll results, did we? No, we haven't done the poll. Do yeah, let's, let's do that now.
Okay, we had a slightly better response to this one. We had about 78% of the attendees who voted. And the uh, majority believe that, uh, you know, it's the answer is all of the above, that IT, running IT like a business will create uh, business and IT alignment will help the business understand IT's value proposition and will optimize IT costs. Only 2% believe that it was none of the above. Um, but um, other than uh, the majority, uh, the next believe that it would help uh, business understand IT's value proposition, which was at 46%. 29% believe that it would create business and IT alignment, and 21% believe that it would optimize IT costs. Fantastic. I think I think that's in line with my thinking and my experience. I think those are the things, those are the drivers that push us in this direction of IT as an internal organization. And I believe um, that, that benefit, those benefits that are described there, and there are many more, those benefits are typically realized if we start approaching IT as an internal organization. and um, so this is good. Thank you so much, Sonika. Thank you. So IT as a business versus IT initiatives, you can see the pros and cons, right? You can clearly articulate IT's ROI or value. That's the more appropriate term in my book. You can clearly see the impact of your decisions. Uh, let me just take a very simple example. You uh, decide to create a product. And if the product doesn't sell, you know the next time, or actually, you know, as a CEO, you'd immediately get rid of that product that's not selling, that product that is getting a lot of complaints. You will slowly and surely hone in your capabilities. You are now in the business of core competency. You're no longer going to be in the business of any and every service. Now, just a simple rule of business. Anybody who's followed, and you know, these car companies are my favorite. If anybody has followed this market, you know for a fact that General Motors kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger till it started to fail. There's always a span of control issue. There's always a certain size beyond which managing companies with current techniques, tools, methodologies gets really difficult. Similarly, for a CIO, it's a much, much better thing to do to focus on your core competencies because every single organization IT or marketing or whatever has certain core capabilities. They have certain competencies that they're really good at. Some organizations are really good at building products. Some other organizations are really good at maintaining products. Some are really good at selling things. So you have to see what is it. And, and, and you know, I'm sorry to take you back to the whole you know, levers of competitive advantage discussion that we had the last time you know what to excel in, you know what to brand in, you know what to pre could build a business model in. So as a CIO, you'll be way more successful because now you're much more focused on only those products and services that the market wants, and more importantly, only on those products that your core competencies can deliver profitably. As, as an extreme example, as an extreme case, you can actually spin off this organization to provide services externally. I've seen that happen, and I've seen it happen successfully, so I won't, I won't say that it doesn't work or it doesn't happen. Uh, now, on the other side, here's what your problem is. Number one, uh, pricing internally. Uh, quite, quite frankly, you know, market rules do not apply. You, you just have to accept that if you are internal, then you have a captive market. Internal rules are not going to apply. Will you be allowed to, like I said before, not undertake unprofitable pro projects? Uh, I gave you the example of a loss leader. Uh, the business really needs a capability, an IT-driven capability, and you say, no, I, I can't really do it because I won't make any money in it. Well, quite frankly, you'd be looking for other jobs does not have the scale to get economies of scale. We already discussed it. Quite frankly, all of these things we've discussed, all of the cons we've discussed, you just have to keep in mind one thing, which is how far along this track do you want to go? And that is where the success of failure in my book is going to occur in how you moderate these expectations. If you look at the continuum, and I and I haven't looked at, the, at it horizontally because there's a whole whole line of thinking which is horizontal to this, but if you started as a cost center, which most if not all IT organizations started, 
then you've gone into this business of you're actually providing services. Well, that's fantastic because that's a really nice way of looking at it. Then you became an internal business, and then you became an external business with one of your clients being the marketing department, marketing organization of your own company. Now, value exchange is absolutely critical because that's how your business model is defined. That's how your entire IT capability is created because the more a particular realm gives you value, you put more money, more capability is devised to address that realm. When I say horizontally, there are a whole bunch of models being discussed as we speak, which is creating a bigger business services organization where IT's top level, strategy, architecture, governance, all of those things now reside in business services. Now the question is, does the CIO, so, so you'll strip the IT organization of everything other than the building function, and then people say, well, the building function, quite frankly, can go to the cloud or, or you know, SaaS or IAS or whatever. So now the CIO can be, a, a, you know, if they remain with the IT organization, they can be, uh, you know, a, an integration person, right? The old systems of integrator model. But all of these things are being discussed that do not necessarily fall under the realm of IT as an internal business. In my mind, those things are really at a discussion level right now. I haven't seen a whole bunch of that activity happening in organizations where you know there's a movement to the cloud, but now the shrinking of the IT organization to move towards a more shared services, shared business services model. That movement occurred. That movement stalled. Bits and pieces of that movement are still occurring, but no wholesale. Seventy-five percent of the IT organization is not being gutted. Not that I've seen, but if you have, please let me know. Send me an email. It would be a very interesting discussion. <clears throat> we spoke about deriving IT's business model. Uh, you know the the levers of uh, competitive advantage are the same that are available to you, but they're going to be driven by what is profitable for the business. You have a captive market, but you can't ignore it. So now you're going to be looking at the market as a market, but you're going to be addressing it as any business would address its market. Uh, we, we spoke about these IT capabilities and IT organizations, so I'm not going to take any, any more time. Let's talk about the differences. So we've spoken about these two different models. We've seen how IT creates value. What is, what is the net difference between IT as a business and IT as an investment? Now the cost factor, let me, let me first take away the cost factor. It's going to be roughly the same. You know, you're basically talking about a budget in, in one case and a budget in another. You, you really cannot think of, you know, I can't think of other areas in which we can differentiate cost. You'll notice I've, I've taken three dimensions. Business value, cost and risk, which is a typical business case that we do, has these three dimensions. Business value in the case of IT as a business is all about product pricing and the market driven the more the market drives a price, the more realistic your revenue projections are. And in the case of initiatives, you're thinking in terms of uh, you know, your typical business case that you've developed, which is how much value did I create for the business, how much cost avoidance, or any of these things that happen there. On the risk side, here's, here's where the key differentiator is. IT as a business does not present a meaningful way of assessing risk because it's assuming risk in the product life cycle. So if you're thinking of any business, the risk for that business is that they will not be able to create a product that the market wants. If you have a captive market, quite frankly, you are creating products, whether they're profitable or not. And if you have the price sheet in your, in your possession and at your whim and not driven by market, Really, this is a really nice game to play, but quite frankly, it's not giving you any real parameters to assess risk. In the case of IT as an investment, you are really looking into what risk is inherent in any initiative that you undertake. So in my opinion, the biggest thing driving my decision to run an IT organization as a series of investments is this factor. That this is where a lot of emphasis is placed as it should be, but in the model of IT as an internal organization, this is, this is an add-on. You're going to have to make an effort in identifying 
and talking about this. I think I've already overshot my time. Uh, one more slide, Sonica, and then it's all yours. Uh, I think the, the, the key thing here that I want to leave you all with is that both of these models really are one and the same. The only difference is, if you, if you notice, the only difference is in how you bundle IT initiatives as products or services. So if you go to the right-hand side, all of the IT capability discussion, every piece of discussion is roughly the same. The only thing that you're adding are a discussion of business model, products and services, and that is really not a, not, not a major leap. It's actually a quantum jump where, where you are now thinking and putting on your business hat in the context of initiatives, and that's how you try to bridge these two things, and you can, you can track your journey, or you can plot your journey or a roadmap to going from where you are to where you want to be. Thank you very much, Sonika. I apologize, as always, I've overshot my time, but it's all yours. Thank you, Saurabh. Uh, we have uh, quite a few questions. Um, I will start with the first one, uh, which is, um, I, I think it's a very broad question and uh, would uh, you know, appreciate hearing your point of view. Uh, the question is, what is the future of corporate IT? <laughs> I, think, I think this is the question. There are, there are many, many different models being presented uh, as to the future of corporate IT. And those models are all trying to break down. One of the biggest problems I've seen with this discussion on IT is that IT started as a function. And organizational design used to be a function-based design. And I see that as a problem because functions don't deliver value. Processes do. So if you look at a, at a, at a process, that whole process delivers value. If you look at a process, it's comprised of multiple, multiple team members each with a functional capability. So the discussion is just moving forward with you know, the future of corporate IT, unfortunately, is trying to unbundle the functions that IT performs. So the study that I had referenced early on is still unbundling the functions of IT and trying to place them in different boxes. It's still missing the point. And the point is that you cannot keep on rearranging the chairs on the Titanic you have to find out a way to create a process-driven organization. And that is where I believe the future of corporate IT lies, where people are going to realize that we have to devise processes and create organizations that are driven by that process. I don't believe the CIO is going to go extinct. I don't believe the IT organization is going to lose 75% of its, its people by 2015. I don't believe any of these things is happening, and quite frankly, if you're seeing it, please send me an email because that would wake me up. But I am seeing a net movement of the IT organization now being held accountable for the value that they deliver. I'm seeing a net movement for the CIO to be a business leader. CIOs see that themselves. I mean, the IBM study was pretty, pretty vocal, but CIOs themselves are seeing this, that they're being asked to be a business leader, act, behave, talk, do like a business leader. That movement I'm seeing. So hopefully this answers your question, but this is this is like boiling boiling the ocean, so it's a pretty wide question. The next question that we have is um, it, it's what about the commercialization agenda for IT services? Uh, if I understand the question correctly, you're saying uh, you know should an internal organization commercialize or sell its products externally? Well, I I I, I would say yes. But then now, how, how are you positioned? How well is an internal organization positioned against an IBM or an Accenture? I mean, that's the question you need to ask yourself. And that is one of the reasons why I think uh, the whole reason for having an internal organization, which is not a business, is because there are certain things only an internal organization should do. And there are certain things that an internal organization does as a result of which they don't develop capabilities that, that are marketable or should be marketed. So if I create, and I do not you know, subscribe to this viewpoint that IT doesn't matter because I fundamentally believe IT does matter. IT has not been commoditized, and there are certain capabilities that are going to be strategic that are developed by the only the internal IT organization, should not be given to an external vendor to provide, should not be sold to other companies or competitors. So 
uh, yes, I support com commercializing things that you can safely commercialize, which are you know somewhat pseudo, uh, you know, uh, commoditized or won't affect your competitive position. But I believe there are boundaries to where you can take this commercialization. Uh, thanks, sir. We are really running out of time, so I will ask you one last question. What are the essential things for IT to work as a business? I think uh, the three things, four things that I mentioned before. One is that uh, the CIO has to now think of themselves as the CEO of an internal organization or business. They have to be products and services and product catalog. Pricing has to be realistic, so uh, you know you have to have a price catalog, but you have to have market-driven pricing. So you're going to in the least poll what that's what a similar product or service costs outside. So I think uh, these three things, and if you really want to take it a step further, you can have uh, you know a balance sheet and an income statement. Uh, thank you so much, Saurabh, and uh, thank you everybody um, once again for joining us. We apologize for the initial technical issue with the audio and appreciate your patience. Given that, uh, given that issue, we may repeat this webinar, uh, schedule permitting, and you will be informed if we do so, should you wish to reattend. Um, you will also be receiving a feedback survey by email on this webinar. Your response to the survey is appreciated and of great value to us as we continually strive to improve upon what we deliver to our members. Our next webinar in the series, eBusiness Strategy, Profit from the Net, is scheduled for March 27th. You can register for it at CIOindex.com. You will also find a list of our upcoming webinars there. Thank you once again for joining us today. You may exit the webinar by simply clicking the X on your control panel or choosing File, then Exit. Thank you and have a great day.